everyone, it's Bill Griffin. Welcome to Different Tech Podcast. If you like this content, please subscribe, like, share, comment. Really appreciate you watching. Today is uh, March 13th, 2023. And a couple days ago, or last Friday, Silicon Valley Bank went into receivership. And there's a lot of discussion about how this happened. Well, I'm going to tell you what I think the major cause was, and a lot of people agree with me. Peter Schiff talked about this on his podcast. I won't go into the details that he does, but what you have is uh, you have a bank with depositors that have pretty high balances. And then, so their their accounts, there's a limit on what's insured, $250,000. Well, they have millions in accounts. A lot of uh, tech companies are with this bank, Silicon Valley, not surprising. There's one on the bank. What caused this run is uh, tech companies were bleeding the company cash because tech's not doing that great uh, right now. And uh, they had purchased long-term bonds. Uh, For example, 10-year U.S. Treasury bonds or longer-term mortgage uh, securities. Well, these assets are quite safe. Things are a lot different than 2008 when you talk more mortgage people kind of freak out, but um, they're well collateralized. Problem is, rates have gone up. So you have 10 year treasury, you purchase at 1%, and now the rates, three and a half, you're going to take a beating. That's what happened. They didn't anticipate this. So the management ultimately should have probably anticipated this, but if you think about it, it's not unreasonable to invest typically in 10 year <laughs> treasury bonds. So what caused the rates to go up? Well, inflation has spurred the Fed, moved rates up. So these securities aren't worth as much. So why did they do that? Well, they did that because we're, they're combating inflation. So what caused the inflation? Well, for years, the Fed had very low interest rates and they expanded the money supply. So why do they do that? Well, to enable Congress to spend. It was much easier for Congress to spend, and we're up to $31.5 trillion U.S. federal debt, other obligations, and we're on a track as a country to become insolvent and default on a lot of loans. So, yes, a lot of people are complaining about the management of the company, the are irresponsible. These are safe securities. I don't know that's unreasonable. Um, they did not properly anticipate and made a mistake. They're going to pay for sure. They're going to pay. Uh, they're ultimately responsible for the solvency of the company. And but what actually caused this? And if there's a ripple effect, or a domino effect, I should say, with other banks. What caused this? The disruption caused by this outrageously irresponsible fiscal policies that the Congress, almost all Democrats, are on board with, some Republicans, and then over the years, you have different administrations, Republicans, and Democrats and Republicans always work out a deal. People say we have divided government. You you can't be too divided. They've spent $31.5 trillion on the books over and above what the government's taking in. And we're on a track, a very bad track. So the government is partly to blame for this bank failing. The bank would not fail had government been more responsible. And many other companies will fail because of this very reason, because of rates going up. Uh, Many businesses failed because the government shut them down during COVID. So when businesses get shut down, what happens? A lot of politicians, especially Democrats, they come along and they blame regulations, the lack of them, so more regulations, and they want they want to blame the businesses themselves. They want to blame capitalism. 
So this is what Bernie Sanders put out today. Senator Bernie Sanders, United States Senator for Vermont, uh, put this out actually March 12th. I'm doing this as a March 13th. News, Sanders' statement on Silicon Valley Bank. Let's be clear. The failure of Silicon Valley Bank is a direct result of an observed 2018 bank deregulation bill signed by Donald Trump that I strongly opposed. Five years ago, the Republican director of the Congressional Budget Office released a report finding that this legislation would increase the likelihood that a large financial firm with assets of between $100 billion and $215 billion would fail. Not if Bernie Sanders in Congress had acted even somewhat responsibly because rates wouldn't be as high as they are. But he's complaining that this bank went down because of these regulations that need to be in place so that he can spend money. Congress can spend money. This is Ro Khanna. This is on Twitter, March 11th. He's a congressman from, guess where, Silicon Valley. Ro Khanna. The FDIC needs to investigate short sales over the past few months by executives, and at a minimum, there should be a clawback with penalties of profits made. This should go to nonprofits like Sunnyvale Community Services, who are worried about losing Silicon Valley bank deposits and paying mortgage. Okay, I don't have a problem with that. That's typical that they'd be clawed back, but he wants to decide who gets the money. And he will, he will blame regulations and capitalism. That's what they will do. Um, Elizabeth Warren will do this. You call, she was complaining about the rising prices of gas on oil companies being greedy. Well, I've been over that in other episodes. What is greed? Um, Congress is greedy because they spend so much money uh, that they can never collect. This is Adam Schiff. In 2018, under Trump, I opposed Wall Street's effort to loosen regulation over banks like Silicon Valley Bank. But it passed, and now ordinary workers and families pay a very heavy price. This is an oversight failure in addition to a failure by the bank's management. So he's blaming the management of the bank and the lack of regulations, but no uh, responsibility whatsoever for the rate environment, the interest rate environment. That's what destroyed this bank. That's what's going to destroy maybe other banks, and that's what's going to hurt the economy. Because the higher the rates are, the, obviously the more expensive capital is, the less hiring will be done. And why, why is the Fed doing this? Because Congress spent and spent and spent. At the heart of the problem, our country has had absolutely dreadful monetary and fiscal policy enacted. But none of these three would ever admit that. So you cause chaos, and um, you don't you don't really care whether chaos happens because in it, in the case of these three, in the likes of Elizabeth Warren, Hillary Clinton, Joe Biden, because you can come in and say I've got the answer: government, government control is the answer, and more spending is the answer. So. If the United States government defaults, it won't be my fault. I didn't do that. I didn't spend too much. It's just, it's somebody else's fault. So that, I'm afraid, is what is not a, an insignificant, trivial risk that the uh, United States is taking that it will default on its obligations if it doesn't change its ways, which doesn't look like that's going to happen. So what will the Fed do? So some people say, well, this is causing such a threat to the financial system. The Fed needs to halt with its raising 
rates incrementally to get the CPI down to 2%. They're saying, no, we need to, that, they don't need to do that. And so what will happen? Well, that will cause inflation to rise further. There will be ebbs and flows, but this uh, Joe Biden claiming that everything's hunky-dory with the economy, it's utter nonsense. Utter nonsense. So you believe what you want. If you disagree with me, please let me know. But uh, that's my episode today. If you like this content, please subscribe, like, share, comment. Really appreciate you watching. Thank you.